Well, Mr. Speaker, Honourable Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition, Honourable Members and Friends, Good Pla Morning Gata. Thank you for your warm and your generous welcome to Papua New Guinea. I am delighted to be the first Australian Prime Minister to visit Papua New Guinea since 2018. And I am deeply, deeply honoured to be the first foreign head of government to address your parliament. And what a magnificent parliament this is. A building rich with art and culture and tradition of Papua New Guinea's proud history and identity. A built and a chamber alive with optimism for the future of this nation and the progress of your people. Australia and Papua New Guinea are the closest of neighbours. We are the greatest of friends. For thousands of years, Torres Strait Islanders and the indigenous tra traders of PNG shared culture and kinship, exchanging goods and ideas. That thread runs unbroken through us today to our modern trade links, our evolving business and investment ties, our migrants and expats, our expanding fields of cultural and educational exchange, even, of course, our shared passion for rugby league. We are friends. We are mates. We are partners. We are equals. We are neighbours who stand with each other and help each other in times of need. Australians will never forget the heroism and humanity of the brave souls who, some eight decades ago, came from all over this country to serve and fight alongside our soldiers in defence of this land and in defence of Australia's freedom too. Or in recent times, the 100 members of Kumul Force deployed in Operation Bushfire Assist to help Australia in the devastating black summer of 2019-2020. PNG was one of the very first countries to offer Australia assistance, and Kumul Force was the biggest international contingent that was deployed. And on behalf of all Australians, I simply say thank you. Thank you, true. <laughs> Honourable members, over there on the table, I can see the ceremonial mace, a gift from the parliament and the people of Australia to the first Papua New Guinea House of Assembly in 1964, a crown symbol of authority that dates back centuries to the mothers of parliaments in Westminster. And yet, entwined with the gold leaf and silver plate, at the core of your mace is something that is unique, a polished stone ball representing the head of a traditional club. There is profound truth bound up in that. Australia gave your first assembly a symbol of our support and respect and also affection, a demonstration of the precious value we place on our country's deep and lasting friendship, and a token of gratitude for the extraordinary service your people gave to ours in the darkest days of the Second World War. But the true weight, the real power and the great strength at the heart of that democratic symbol comes from Papua New Guinea. It comes from you, your people, your culture, your courage, your talent and your intellect and ambition. That was the truth at the core of the movement to independence now nearly half a century ago. Because independence was not Australia's gift 
to give. It was the people of Papua New Guinea's right to assert. It was your opportunity to seize. In this land of extraordinary contrasts and variety in landscapes and traditions and languages, people united around a deep faith in democracy and a powerful commitment to family and community and care for their neighbours. Independence was, as my great predecessor Gough Whitlam said on that day of celebration in 1975, an idea whose time has come. And it arrived not as a contested act of revolution, but rather as a considered statement of national maturity, of national unity, and also a national ambition for PNG to serve as a leader in the region. As Grand Chief Sir Michael Samare said at the first South Pacific Forum that PNG attended as a member state, and I quote Sir Michael Samare, we are not here to rock the boat but to add another in order that our voyage to that glorious destination may be reached. Nearly half a century later, we are still on that voyage together. And yes, there have been rough seas and tough times, but our friendship has held true. And now on the horizon, a world of opportunity awaits us because Australia and Papua New Guinea are bound, not just by a shared past and a shared border, but by a common determination to shape our own futures, to seize the opportunities of this moment in this region. This can be a decisive decade for peace, prosperity, unity and security in the Indo-Pacific. As two big Pacific Ocean states, Australia and PNG must work as equals with our fellow Pacific states to build a stronger, safer, more secure region. All of us have a part to play in realising that vision. And tied in with that, all of us who serve as parliamentarians have a unique opportunity and a particular responsibility to defend the democracy in which we serve. And we fulfil that duty best by demonstrating the value of this place and the ideals that it is built on, by proving that the system we belong to has the power to change people's lives for the better. This begins with ensuring that every girl and boy has the right to grow up happy and safe and with the opportunity to get a great education. The government I lead is committed to strengthening Australia's education partnership with PNG, working with you on the important priorities you've identified, including the early years and vocational education and training, and making sure that equality for women and girls goes far beyond the opportunity to attend school. We know every nation can do better and do more to achieve this, from greater economic empowerment to preventing domestic and family violence to achieving equality in representation. I am proud to lead the first Australian government in 122 years where the majority of our members are women. And I want to congratulate the two new women members elected to this place. You are representatives and you are trailblazers and I hope you inspire a new generation of women and girls to serve their country and their democracy. Equality for women is fair, it is right and it is powerful economic reform. It boosts productivity, participation and drives growth because it means drawing on the talent and initiative and enterprise of the whole population, not just half of it. Friends, 
Education is a mighty weapon against disadvantage and equality is a powerful lever for economic growth. But recent years have provided the world with a vivid reminder that healthy economies depend, above all, on healthy people. Australia will continue to provide support to PNG's health priorities, including in infectious diseases such as TB, HIV, child and maternal health and malaria. And we are proud that the Australian-funded Angar Hospital was completed last year in Ley. This new facility will serve an area that is home to over one million people and make a major contribution to boosting access to health care in PNG. Prime Minister Marape, as you know, it was a Pangu government and an Australian Labor government that worked together to usher in a new era for Papua New Guinea half a century ago. In 2023, I want our two governments to work together to unlock a new generation of prosperity for your nation, to boost our two-way trade in everything from coffee and cocoa to fisheries and tourism, and to bolster the significant direct investment made by the Australian private sector in PNG, which already stands at some $24 billion. More than we invest in India, more than we invest in Indonesia, more than we invest in Malaysia, right here in Papua New Guinea. I understand PNG is eager to expand your exports of more processed goods and varied agricultural products. And I see these as areas where the Australian business community can play a key role. Our government also stands ready to assist PNG to improve your biosecurity regime to enable your farmers and producers to access international markets. And as the world looks to a more sustainable model for growth, PNG has a tremendous opportunity to expand your green economy. I know a number of Australian companies are keen to explore what can be done in this area, including in hydro and hydrogen production, for example. Together, I am confident that we can ensure that the rich natural resources of Papua New Guinea are made to deliver good jobs, lasting investment and sustainable development for your nation. But our friendship is deeper than trade and our partnership and cooperation and engagement should reach beyond it. Infrastructure is a long-standing policy passion of mine, and I'm proud that Australia is working with PNG to deliver an ambitious program of nation-building projects, upgrading ports to create jobs and clear away bottlenecks, as well as opening the door for developing export industries building and maintaining a better road network to make it easier for farmers to get their product to market and to ensure that communities have more reliable access to good services. And here, on the threshold of the biggest markets and the fastest growing economies in the world in human history, digital and communications infrastructure is every bit as vital as roads and ports. This is why Australia built the Coral Sea Cable and is helping to build a productive and competitive telecommunications market for PNG. It's important and right that the Australian Infrastructure Financing Facility for the Pacific has a strong pipeline of projects here in PNG. And I look forward to following their progress and celebrating their completion. Friends, in the years ahead, Australia and Papua New Guinea have a chance to honour our shared history of service in the cause of peace by adding to it, deepening our defence ties and enhancing our national security cooperation and achieving a swift conclusion 
to negotiations on a bilateral security treaty, a treaty that will underpin our work together to address PNG's priority needs, including law and order challenges, strengthening the justice system and strengthening the rule of law, a treaty based on deep trust and a treaty that builds on the family first approach to regional security. An example to others and an investment in the future of our partnership. In the same spirit of regionalism, we are expanding opportunities for PNG citizens to travel and work in Australia. Through the Working Holiday Visa, the Pacific Engagement Visa and in particular the Pacific Australia Labor Mobility Scheme. Australian farmers and producers benefit from the expertise and industry of your people. Just as importantly, the people of PNG earn good wages and develop new skills that they can use to support their families, educate their children and invest in opportunities that will deliver future prosperity for themselves and for PNG. And Prime Minister Marape, my government backs your ambition to significantly increase the number of PNG workers who take part in, in this program in Australia and contribute to the future prosperity of both of our nations. Honourable members, all of you appreciate that our region is on the front line of the global fight against climate change. Our Pacific neighbours are counting on the PNG and Australia to support international cooperation, to show leadership and to take action. There is not a moment to waste. It is up to our generation to protect the precious and unique natural environment of our rainforests, our reefs and our coasts to build and plan our infrastructure so our communities are more resilient and better prepared for natural disasters. It is the responsibility of our generation to ensure that our farmers and producers do not suffer irreversible damage to their land and their livelihoods. And it is a great opportunity of our generation to grasp the transformative economic benefits of clean energy technology. All of which is why I'm very pleased that PNG will be joining the Indo-Pacific Carbon Offset Scheme. Honourable Members, when Prime Minister Marape and I watched the State of Origin together in Suva last year, he said there are only three days that your country stops. Game one, game two, and game three of State of Origin. That is something I think that a lot of Australians can relate to. And it was great to see so many people getting off the Air New Guinea flights in Brisbane to support the talent of the Kumuls and the Orchids in the Prime Minister's 13 matches. And today I affirm my view that I want to see a PNG-based team, Pacific Islanders, competing in the National Rugby League competition. Whether it is rugby league or cricket with the Barras and the Lures or the work being done here by the AFL, sport is such a genuine and powerful way of building strong and lasting ties between our peoples at a code and club and community and family level. And the same is true for education and art and cultural exchange. My government will continue to support programs that deepen understanding and strengthen connections between Australians and the people of Papua New Guinea because at the heart of our two nations' friendship is that sense of respect and connection between equals. Honourable members, tomorrow I will travel to Wewak to pay my respects at the resting place of Grand Chief 
Sir Michael Samare. Before I left for this visit, I was shown a photo taken in 1974 at an event in my hometown of Sydney. The Grand Chief, holding on to part of a two-pronged spear, which he's just broken across his knee, into two pieces. One was given to Gough Whitlam, the other to the great Matuan leader, Oala Oala Rewaru of Pari village. This gesture was a symbol of peace, but also the signifier of a pact, of a promise between two leaders. A new path of friendship, mateship and common accord. A bond between equals. I am proud to say today that Australia is determined to continue to honour that promise. We stand with you. We hold true. Our two nations are bound together. Now let us build together a future of peace, prosperity and opportunity for all. Thank you. Tuo gate. Look at you behind. Thank you very much. See you again. We now ask him, Honourable Prime Minister, will you meet Papua New Guinea? Let's make him top top long. Mr. Speaker, let me firstly appreciate and thank you and all members of Parliament on both sides of the House for allowing and welcoming my good friend, the Australian Prime Minister, Right Honourable Anthony Albanese, who have just addressed our people's national parliament. I want to thank Prime Minister Albanese and your entire delegation for finding